guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about automated turret pods. These are going to be super important now that you can only have 12 turrets active in one space at a time. By turning on all 15 of these turrets, three of them will automatically get shut down and we can't determine which three. Having less than 12 turrets on at a time still works totally fine. And this is where the pods come in. If the turrets automatically turn themselves on and off as needed, then we can have as many turrets as we want. That's why today I'm going to show you two turret pod setups. A simple and an advanced one. Let's get into it. For our simple turret pod setup, you're going to need one large battery, one HPHF, one AND switch, one door controller per door, two electrical branches, plus an additional branch per turret. We'll get going by placing our battery and power source. After that, we'll get two of our branches and our AND switch placed. Moving on to the turret pod, we're going to place our HVHF. Then let's get our turrets down and an electrical branch for each one. Make sure to get a weapon into each turret. Last but not least, we'll place our door controller. With all our components placed, it's time to start wiring. Connect the battery output to the first electrical branch. Based on our number of turrets and doors, we're going to set our electrical branch to 48. Connect the branch out from the first branch to the second branch. The power out from our second branch will go into the first input of the AND switch, and the branch out will go to the HBHF input. Our HBHF output will be our second input to the AND switch. Then we're going to connect our AND output to one of our turret electrical branches. Set each of these branches to 10 and connect the branch out to the turret. Make sure you set your HBHF to exclude authorized. Connect the power out from each of the turret branches to the next one and repeat this process until you get to the last branch. Pair your door controller to your door, and then connect the power out from the last branch to your door controller. Now we've got the whole pod hooked up, and this is what it would look like if some compound grub jumped in and activated the HBHF. I've replicated this setup three more times, and now I've got 16 turrets all active in a small space, despite the turret change. If you're liking the video so far, and want to see more content like this in the future, please feel free to subscribe. Although our simple setup works, it's overly dependent on the HBHF and requires too much electricity. Both of these problems will be solved by our advanced circuit. Let's get right into our second setup. For this circuit, you're going to need a battery and an extra one per pod, two XOR switches, a blocker, a splitter, an RF broadcaster and an RF receiver, one door controller per door, an HBHF, five branches and one per turret, and a timer. We're going to get right into placing our components. Once 
everything is placed, connect your battery output to your first electrical branch. Set the first branch to 13. Connect the branch out from the first electrical branch to your second branch. Set that second branch to 3. Connect the branch out from your second branch to your first XOR switch. Connect the power out from your second branch to your third. Set your third branch to 5 and connect the branch out from your third branch to your splitter. Connect your splitter output to your fourth branch. Connect your fourth branch's power out to the blocking side of your blocker. Then connect the power out from your third branch to the input of your blocker. Connect the power output of your first XOR to your second XOR. Also connect the power output from your blocker to your second XOR. Then connect your second XOR output to your RF broadcaster. Once again, place your HBHF near your turret pod. Connect the power in of your HBHF to your splitter. After that, connect your first XOR and your HBHF output. With that done, we have our circuit done for our first turret pod and we'll need to replicate it three more times. With the circuit replicated, all we need to do is chain our lowest branches together from power out to power in. Now that we have the controller circuit finished, we can set up the smaller circuit for each pod that will be much more simple. First, make sure each RF broadcaster has a unique frequency. Then once again, we'll start by placing a battery and a new power source. With those hooked up, place your RF receiver, your timer, and your electrical branch. Connect your battery output to your branch. Connect your branch out to your RF receiver. Then wire together the power out from the RF receiver to the toggle on of the timer. The power out from your branch goes to your timer. Make sure you set your timer for as long as you want your pods to open every time they're triggered. I recommend about 30 seconds. Also make sure your receiver frequency is set to match your HBHF. Lastly, connect your timer output to the input of the turret pod branch just like we had before. These pods internally are wired the same as they were on our last example. Now that everything's hooked up, we have our first pod working completely wirelessly. And after the timer duration expires, our pod will automatically close again. All we have to do is replicate the turret receiver circuit three more times and we'll be good to go. With the receiver circuit replicated, we now have four fully functioning wireless turret pods. As you can see on our controller battery, we have room for even more pods with four circuits already hooked up. One of the biggest benefits is that when our turret pods aren't active, they don't draw anything from the battery, ensuring we always have a full charge. Now let me show you the value of having that controller circuit. Even if some grub manages to break your HBHF, the turret pods will still open and your base will be safe. All we need to do is place a new HBHF and rewire it to have our turret pods up and working again. That concludes our advanced circuit demonstration, but let me show you a few add-ons that'll really help you keep your loot safe.
by placing a smart alarm and wiring it to one turret, we can have a raid alarm just like we did in the intro. Our next option is something I find really important, adding switches to all of the turret pods. Make sure all your RF broadcasters get set to the correct corresponding frequencies. Connect the power out on your controller circuit from your last pod branch to your first branch in for your switch. Then connect the branch out to the switch and the switch to the RF broadcaster. Rinse and repeat, and you're good to go for the rest of the way. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe and feel free to check out all the other content on my channel.